Hello, and thank you for listening. My name is Ennis Apkin, and I will be presenting the all new Genomics Virtual Lab on behalf of my collaborators. Before we take a look at the new features, let's take a look at where did the GBL originate. As cloud providers were emerging about a decade ago, we came up with the idea that individual researchers should be able to launch their own instances of Galaxy on the cloud. Through BioCloud Central, an effort pioneered by Brad Chapman of BOSC, we allowed researchers to fill out a simple web form and launch in their own instance of Galaxy on Amazon. This idea has since then evolved to Cloud Launch, an application that allows a variety of applications to be integrated into uh, the launch process and then launched on a number of cloud providers. So what was a, as part of the GVL, what was originally available on the Amazon Web Services uh, Cloud was evolved in partnership with the University of Melbourne to support OpenStack and was deployed on a variety of sites across Australia. We also evolved the idea of launching Galaxy on the cloud to creating a cloud workspace where researchers had easy access to remote desktop, iPod film notebooks, RStudio, and SSH all within one and the same environment. With the GVL5, however, we are changing the deployment model. What was originally available in a self-serve model where we provided a curated GBL package and individual researchers launched on their own accounts in different cloud instances, different um, cloud providers, we are offering as a portable platform for integrating uh, applications in the form of managed GBLs. So the idea is that researchers come to the GBLs and the GBL offers applications, data, and infrastructure. Why is this? Because we're trying to optimize for user experience. The idea uh, for an individual user was to provide, uh, to get access to isolated, customizable runtime environment. A researcher would go launch their own through Cloud Launch, go through the launch process, and have access to a personal GBL. However, this process required the researchers to get access to a cloud provider, get credentials, appropriate permissions, and the launch process was complex in itself, oftentimes taking up the days for researchers to get this just right. With this new idea, we're, we would like to continue to provide um, the isolated, customizable runtime environment for researchers, but in a different context. Here, an administrator would come to Cloud Launch and launch a managed instance of the GBL. Researchers then come to this managed GBL and get access to applications through the concepts of projects. Instead of taking days, it basically takes seconds. So with that, I'd like to present the all new GBL. It is a complete rewrite of the code that took nearly three years. Um, and I'd like to split this into two uh, settings. One is the user experience, where we will first see what the researcher experience might look like. As a researcher, your experience with the GBL begins in the data browser. You have a folder-like view of the data with the ability to upload your own data to the GBL. So in this case, we upload data from our local laptop, select a handful of files, and in a matter of a few seconds uh, or minutes, depending on the size of the data, the upload the data becomes available in the GBL. In addition to the browser-based uploads, we can mount the GBL data storage, just like Google Drive, directly into uh, a local uh, finder in the case of Mac. In this case, the data that we uploaded through the web browser also appears on our um, local folder, and we can add more data sets like that. Once uploaded, this data is available to all the applications that are available in the GBL. So for example, if we look at our studio, we have our own instance of our studio available for analysis, and the data that we uploaded in the data browser is instantly available. We can load one of the R scripts uh, that was uploaded there uh, into R Studio, run through the script to execute uh, the commands, and as the script runs, the data sets are produced, and these are available in the data browser um, on the GBL. So if we go back to our data browser and look at the files, the files that were created by R Studio are now also available in the general GBL data browser. These files are also available in other applications. So in this case, if we take a look at Jupyter and Jupyter Hub, the same files are available and we can operate on them in a Jupyter notebook. 
Similarly, the same set of applicants, same set of data is available in the terminal web browser, which is another application available by the GVL. The data is right there. All the common commands uh, are available, including tools like Conda, where as a researcher, you can install any packages that your analysis might require. Finally, there's also Galaxy uh, as sort of the flagship application of the GVL. Um, the Galaxy comes with its data libraries uh, capability, which provide us a way to also browse uh, data on the GBL. So here, if we create a sample data library, um, we can then enter the library and add data sets to it. So for example, in this case, we will uh, link the data sets to save and storage and not duplicate it, select those same data sets that we created as part of our studio and import them into our Galaxy data library. If we refresh um, the status of this data library, we will see that the jobs are not running, meaning the data sets are being imported, uh, one of which has already been uh, imported. And we can now import that data set into, as a data set into our uh, history. Once we change our view back to the Galaxy app and the data analysis interface, uh, we can see the data set that we uploaded, created in our studio as a data set available in the history. Once data is available in Galaxy, we can of course operate on it using the tools. Uh, Galaxy and the GVL comes with nearly 700 tools, most of which uh, are identical to the ones available on usegalaxy.org. And, um, and more are being added uh, in sync with usegalaxy.org. Once we select a tool, the data sets that are uh, available as part of reference data um, required for the specific tool are also available in the GBL. Uh, the same set of reference data sets available on usegalaxy.org are available on the GBL. In addition to the user experience, uh, let's take a look at the administrator experience. So the person that will launch the GBL and provide it as a service to their researchers. As an administrator of the GPL, your experience revolves around the Cloudman application. Here, we see access to all the same applications as the researcher has access to, but we also have extra capabilities, such as editing settings for the applications that integrate so deeply. In the case of Galaxy, we have access to the common Galaxy configuration files that we can see here, all in a visual editor. So for example, if we want to change a value of galaxy.yaml by setting the Galaxy brand, we enter the value, hit save, and GVL would automatically provide a uh, zero downtime rolling upgrade of Galaxy to roll out the new version with the updated configuration settings. In addition to the applications view, we also have the cluster status tab. This here provides us a graphical interface for, for the status of the current cluster or the hardware that the cluster currently runs on. Um, if, depending on the load on the system, we also have the option to expand the size of the cluster. We can manually add additional nodes to the cluster by clicking manually add node and selecting the type of virtual hardware we would like to use. By clicking add, additional nodes will be automatically provisioned that can be removed at any point in the future. Alternatively, we can enable auto scaling, which will automatically scale the size of the cluster between the minimum and the maximum values set uh, based on the current load of the system. Also choosing, allowing us to choose the uh, our virtual hardware type. Each GBL also comes with the option of having a uh, DNS associated with it and with a signed SSL certificate. Back on the Applications tab, if we go into the GBL data browser, which is sort of the researcher view of the GBL, um, we have access to project level data, but in addition, we have access to this special public folder. It has two cap capacities. We'll look at one now. If we upload a data set uh, from our file system onto the GBL, this data automatically, um, well, it's provided in the GPL, but it also is automatically synced to S3 in this case, or uh, respective cloud provider's object store. Each cluster gets a bucket uh, available for it, 
Uh, and if we refresh this bucket, we see that the data set that we uploaded into the public folder is now also automatically available in S3. In the GBL, there's also the notion of projects. Projects provide isolation between different users uh, and for, different, for the applications. We can create as many projects as we would like. For example, if we create a new project, it only takes a few seconds for the project to be provisioned and, um, and created, made available. Each project by default gets a data browser that we saw in the previous incarna incarnations. It also has the ability to add additional applications. So in this case, uh, let's add a couple of applications that are available that have been integrated with the GPL. At this point, these applications are started on the back in the namespace to this specific project uh, and will be available as soon as the applications start. While um, this is starting up, let's take a look at the sort of user management aspects of the GBL. We use Keycloak, an identity um, and access management uh, application that is available in each GBL and handles authentication across the applications. Keycloak provides a variety of options, including the ability to add additional users. So if, for example, we want to add a researcher uh, role or a researcher user to the GBL, we simply type in a username, desired email, and set the um, credentials for the particular user that we then share with them to allow them to log into the GBL. This is the flow that a GBL administrator would go through and then um, invite the researchers to the platform. So I'll now switch to um, this role of a researcher by logging in using the credentials that I just created. So if we open an incognito window and use the username and password just entered into Keycloak, we we'll log into and access the GBL. Here, we get to choose the project that we're currently working on. So in this case, a uh, clear project, and we see uh, the list of applications that were made available. So in contrast to a researcher having to launch the entire system on their own, they can simply uh, access it like this. As a researcher, however, you do not have the capacity to add applications or monitor the cluster status. However, you do have access to the applications uh, and the data available in the GBL. So if we look at the data browser, we will see that this particular project has a new uh, clean folder for its data, but it also has the shared public data that provides the same data that was uploaded in any other project. Okay, let's now focus on availability, the last piece of the presentation. How do we actually get access to the GBL? We initially released GBL, what's now known as Beta 1, back in February this year. Uh, each of these releases has a lengthy blog post that describes the features and capabilities made available. We've since then released two more uh, betas, so the GBL uh, Beta 2 in April and three Beta 3 in June, uh, which is what uh, Beta 4 is what's coming soon, and we'll have the features that uh, we just saw in these demos. GBL is meant to be portable, meaning that there are multiple instances of, of the GBL that can be launched and used by researchers. Um, to do this, you can go to launch.usegalaxy.org, go through the launch process, and get access to it. It is compatible with Amazon, Google, OpenStack, which uh, means Jetstream and Nectar predominantly, and then Azure, which granted gets the least amount of use. However, uh, I'd like to stress one thing, that the GBL should really be launched by admins. It is a complex software stack that requires uh, some technical knowledge and understanding of the system to provide uh, a reliable service. And hence, um, we would really like to advocate if you as a researcher need to use the GBL, talk to your institution, talk to your system administrator um, about providing a managed instance of the GBL for you or your group. To help with this effort, we plan on providing the GBL as a hosted platform uh, in the coming months and years. So predominantly, uh, this is going to be deployed on the Nectar Cloud early next year. And then Jetstream 2, which was recently awarded, uh, will be available, be available uh, for predominantly the US researchers. With that, I would like to thank you for listening. Uh, hope you found this useful and we're willing to give the GBL a try.